Heat pumps in every home. Could it be a reality? And is the UK actually ready? And we know that our Everything Electric audience love a heat pump. And yet here in the UK, of the 28 million homes, roughly just 1% have a heat pump. Whereas in countries like Sweden, 60% of homes have a heat pump. And in fact, 93% of all new heating solutions purchased are heat pumps. And given that Scandinavia is colder than the UK and they're still proving that this technology works, what can we learn here to catch up? Well, fortunately, we found a Swedish heat pump company now based here in the UK to find out more. Welcome to the Everything Electric show. Like Everything Electric? You'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric expos around the world. Come join us in Harrogate, Farnborough and Vancouver. Remember, energy and transport professionals go for free. So Aero is a Swedish company and Sweden has a phenomenal uptake of heat pumps. And something that we see here in the UK is that when we talk about heat pumps, people often say, oh, the UK is too cold for heat pumps. It's going to be too much of a constraint on the electricity grid. What's your experience there? And what are some of the things that we can take from Sweden and apply to here in the UK? Yeah, so a few things to understand about Sweden, first of all, is only 1% of their carbon emissions come from residential heating, where in the UK we're experiencing 16 to 18%. So there's a lot of learnings that we can take from that. In fact, 93% of um, new heating installations in Sweden are a heat pump. So it's a phenomenal figure, especially in a climate where it regularly sees winters of minus 20 to 25. And also, if you look at the actual uh, energy that Sweden produces, over half of its electricity comes from renewable sources. So all of these activities together is exactly the journey that the UK is on at the minute. And we need to focus on all of those learnings and bringing them across. So some of the things that we're seeing that are helping accelerate this transition, exactly what happened in Sweden, there was a strong government subsidy support, which accelerated from around around 2006 to 2010 and we're really seeing this now with the boiler upgrade scheme especially when it was increased to seven and a half thousand pound and in terms of the electricity grid how constrained could it become if we all switch over to electrified heating systems you know in the next five to ten years one of the benefits of the heat pump is actually it will use less energy than what a gas boiler does and that's because of the extremely amazing performance that you get over 400 percent efficient where most modern gas boilers would be anywhere up to 98 percent efficient so it actually will pull less electricity from an energy perspective overall so you can reduce the whole income that a property would need from an energy perspective and that's interesting really because i guess that's something that we need to change our whole language around here in the uk is that we need to think about energy in total and energy efficiency in total not just an amount of gas and an amount of electricity it needs to sort of come all together yeah, and I think the other things that you can think about when you start to get a mix of technologies and you could have, you know, you could have a, an, an electric car and a heat pump and solar panels, not only would you be taken from the grid at certain times, but you can also put back into the grid as well. Now, that will really help us from a load balancing perspective when you think of our network capacity. And if there was one thing that we could take from Scandinavian countries and bring to the UK, say that was a really successful mechanism or policy or what have you, what would that be? So one of the biggest things we need to address in the UK is the spark gap. Now what that is, that's the difference between your electricity price and your gas price. Something that we've seen in Scandinavia is that is dramatically smaller than what we've got in the UK. So it's looking like four times the price of gas and electricity that you see within the UK at the minute. So you've got this amazing technology that is super efficient, but when you've still got such high electricity prices, it actually moves away from some of the benefits that customers would get from installing this technology. In terms of reducing that spark gap, some of that is going to come from reducing taxes, reducing levies, but presumably lots of that could come from getting more and more renewables onto the grid. Exactly. Not only will it give us electricity bills that are cheaper, but it will also give us better security over our energy sources as well. So now is a great time to get a heat pump because of the boiler upgrade scheme. But once you have that in your, in your home, you will continue to benefit from this for a long period of time. And what do you say to people who say, oh, I can't quite get the temperatures high enough in a heat pump? Is that true? 
No. So you can heat any single home and any single room to the temperatures that you want. It's all in the magic of the design. You have to design and size heat pumps and radiators in the right way and you can get any room to any temperature that you want. What we would always look to do though is design to a lower flow temperature of around 40 to 45 degrees which gives us a much better performance of your heat pump. The Aero heat pump system comes in three sizes, 6 kilowatts, 8 kilowatts and 12 kilowatts. It has an impressive 4.7 seasonal coefficient of performance at a flow temperature of 35 degrees C and an operating range of minus 25 to 45 degrees C. Running sound measures between 56 and 57 decibels and the heat pump can produce water temperatures up to 70 degrees C both for space heating via radiators or underfloor piping and domestic hot water. So this is it. This is the Aero heat pump. And in fact, this one here would house a six to eight kilowatt system. So perfect for a two bedroom up to a four bedroom property. And I want to start by commenting a little bit about the design, because unlike a gas boiler, which you don't really see, these do have to live outside your property, maybe at the front of your house or even in your garden. So you do need to be happy with how they look and do they complement your you know, personal taste. And for me personally, I think this 100% does complement my personal taste. I think it is very elegant, it's a very sleek design. You can absolutely tell that it's got that Scandinavian influence. Now, what is the system that we have behind us? Well, air heat pumps are low temperature heat pumps. And that does mean that you will need to replace your hot water cylinder. And that's because, because it's running at a low temperature, it needs a bigger heating element within the hot water cylinder to make sure as much water is in contact with that heating element. And that's what you can see behind us here. This is the, the hot water cylinder, and this is all the sort of computers and intelligence that make sure this system is, is learning and continually evolving depending on how you use heating within your own home. And this here is a buffer tank. And what that does is top up the radiators such that you're not having to have this on all of the time, uh, even when you have your heating on. Now, when you look at all of this and think, oh my goodness, where on earth do I begin? Well, fear not, because you can come along to our live show in Harrogate at the end of May to come and speak either to the Aero team or to speak to our home energy advice team who can guide you through all of the different components that you will need for your own home. But if this is going outside somebody's home, does it need planning permission and how difficult is that process? So this is actually another barrier that we need to overcome in the UK. Um, from an era perspective, what we do is we have a no hassle guarantee. So we'll take care of all the planning applications for customers if they need it. But we need to be in a position where the barrier is removed. You know, you can put extensions on the back of your properties up to a certain size and you don't have to notify anyone. This is a brick built building on the back of your house. You want to put a lovely looking unit like this on the back of your property. In certain situations, you have to write to your local council and go through planning applications and that's such a laborious and time-consuming activity. Sometimes it can take up to nine months until you get an approval, which is ridiculous and has to change. How can we make sure that that does become more straightforward in the future? So there's a consultation that's actually just closed at the minute. What we are really staying close to is the outcome of that consultation. We're hoping that it removes a lot of the barriers for installing these such technologies, and then that will help us massively increase uh, homeowner adoption. In terms of things like EPCs, something that we've experienced on the Everything Electric show is that they don't always necessarily reflect this new technology that's coming in. Um, certainly when we've looked at passive houses, they don't get the most amazing EPC rating. How are heat pumps reflected in that process and is it a fit for purpose system? Yeah, so the reforming of the EPCs is something that we're really interested in as well because it is a slightly outdated system that doesn't support a lot of the renewable technologies. We are really uh, happy with some of the changes that have just happened, uh, which means that some of the measures that are recommended on an energy performance certificate need to be carried out before you can install a heat pump. Now, we really want to make sure the heat pump are installed in the right homes, but having that absolute measure needed to be done every single time was another barrier. Now, the reforming of that has helped uh, us install heat pumps in more situations. We know that the technology works, like we know that heat pumps are a viable solution, but there are other mechanisms that need to exist to enable this. And one of the things that struck us about ERA is that you've got an interesting repayment model. Talk to us about that. 
Now what we've done is we've built up a zero upfront cost model, which means customers can have a heat pump installed, pay nothing upfront, and then they have a regular monthly payment. And when we wrap that up with our 15 year comfort guarantee, it isn't that one off purchase, it's the ongoing relationship that we're building with our era customers. So it's, it's much more of a, of a product that you buy over a long-term basis rather than something you're gonna put in and 10 years later you think I've gotta change it again and so on. And that is interesting because I think the transition that we're in, all of these new technologies can seem scary and intimidating and actually people want assurance that this is the right decision and it's still going to be the right decision in 10 or 15 years time. And that long-term relationship I'm sure gives people so much confidence that this is the right direction as well. So on average, what would a monthly payment repayment look like, assuming that there was elig eligibility for the boiler upgrade scheme? We would expect a property. Of course, this differs on each of the property set up, but it could be anywhere between £60 and £90 per month is something that you could look at as and when we split this over a longer period of time. If you wanted to spread it over 12 months, you know, it could be a couple of hundred pounds per month. So looking at, and I know, uh, payback periods can often be a slightly arbitrary measure, but payback periods of roughly four years. Yeah, so especially when you couple these things up with the time of use tariff, that is when you really bring down the sort of the savings and the payback period. It's genuinely really exciting to see more and more heat pumps available on the market to give homeowners that choice of what works best for them. And it's also really exciting to see the different mechanisms that now exist, for example, paying monthly to make these things even more accessible to more people. Things like the boiler upgrade scheme are certainly helping to accelerate this transition, but we do still have this issue of the spark gap. However, as we see more and more renewables enter onto the grid, if you get a heat pump today, the benefits that you're going to get from it are only set to increase. Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you have been, thank you for watching.